Good morning. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Good evening to friends in North America and hello to anyone watching on replay. My name is Nancy Hetker and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Melbourne, Australia. And today I am going to be making a card um, with this Crafting For You bundle that's in our 2023-2024 annual catalog. Um, and it's really fun, really, really fun, uh, because they've put in some things that are totally stamping up. Um, for instance, there's a stamp of our um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I know it looks like a number of others on the market, but this one is definitely ours. Um, and there is also a die to make our trimmer and this is again definitely our trimmer it's got a little um, representation for our swing arm that comes out and I'll show you I made one I've made a couple of them but I made one that was really trying to be very close to our actual product um, and there it is and um, so I've, I've actually cut it three different times, one out of the basic gray, one out of smoky slate and snipped off to get this trimmer guide bar, um, once out of basic white to get this platform and it's got a groove, it embosses a groove in and I took my basic gray um, stamp and write marker and traced in it to get this part um, yeah and it actually has a separate little tab there that cuts for that piece so it's very fun I think this color is probably closer to pebbled path um, but for my first go I thought that was cool I'll, I'll do another one in pebbled path probably sometime but very fun and I'm not actually using that on today's card but it just sits here sort of as inspiration on my craft desk and uh, I smile when I see it so hello Gladys and Paula and Jenny thank you all for joining me if you are on watching uh, either live or on one of the replay platforms um, please do say hello I love to see who has joined me um, I do like these both this the stamp set and the dies um, the stamp set has coordinating dies for quite a few things um, outline dies for those flowers this flower um, this heart the cut and emboss machine, the sewing machine, the basket, the paint brushes, the yarn. So all of the images have their own, and yeah, the paint brushes, I said that. Those all have coordinating dies. The sentiments don't, that's okay. I can fussy cut them or just stamp them straight or use a label die with them. But then on the, the dies themselves have additional fun, images that cut and emboss at the same time. So there's a ruler, there's a different shaped basket, um, there are some thread spools, and then little dies to make the actual thread. Um, there are buttons. These scissors are so, so cute. They look just like our paper snips. Um, there are a couple of additional hearts and stars and little flowers. Uh, and I've already talked about the paper trimmer. So there are all kinds of fun things to create with in the dies in addition to the to the ones that coordinate with the stamps. Um, and I can't remember if I mentioned um, there's also this uh, embroidery hoop and that I'm going to be using today. So shall we get started? Okay. Um, what am I going to do first? I am going to stamp up that flower image. Um, they show it on the canvas of the easel here, but it is actually a separate stamp. And I'm going to use it within the embroidery hoop. And I am going to be using 
Petal Pink, Flirty Flamingo, and Old Olive. And I am gonna start by inking the whole stamp in the Petal Pink. And then I'm going to come in with my Flirty Flamingo and I'm just gonna go around the edges of each of these flowers. And that's just a quick and dirty thing. There's no exactness about it. And I'm gonna get a little bit in the centers too. I'm just trying to put a second tone on these flowers. A little bit in the center, around the edges, edge, little center of that one. And now I'm gonna get the leaves and because this petal pink is so light, I am not worried about it underneath this old olive. I'm just going to swipe that old olive right on there. And that makes it really quick and easy to get this done. Now, because it's photopolymer, I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Pierce mat and a bit of cardstock and I'm going to stamp that on there like so and this is one of those sort of I don't know if you'd really call it distinctive, but it's it's a textured design, so that's why it doesn't look super, super crisp. Um, it is not distinctive. It just has a sort of watercolory crosshatch look to it. I don't know how well you can see that there. I also wanted to mention this is a Million Sales Achiever stamp set by Irene Wenlant. So, yeah, it's fun when they request. So what happens is if you get a million in sales through Stampin' Up, you can, um, you have input into the design of a stamp set. And so that's then your stamp set. So I'm gonna bring in my cut and emboss, my mini, and this, embroidery hoop and this actually cuts out two things it cuts out the hoop and it cuts out a circle that fits inside and that's what I'm going for here and hopefully I got it lined up in the right place on this Yes, I think I just made it. <laughs> That's sometimes the downside of using a scrap is sometimes you cut it just a little too close. So I don't actually want the hoop itself. I just want the inside part and that came out perfectly. So let's keep that there and put this aside. And now I'm going to make some thread and I've got little scraps of um, adhesive sheet and I'm going to do oh come here wow very strong make sure I've got it under on top of the adhesive sheet and under <laughs> goodness Are so tiny and so cute. There we go. Same thing with the flirty flamingo. And one 
some more with the petal pink. Yeah, Paul, it's a fun, fun set, isn't it? I think the one thing I would wish they had included in addition to the knitting is um, crochet because people do feel quite strongly <laughs> that there is a difference, which of course there is. Um, but if you have a crocheter and you send them a knitting card, it is not a, not a fun thing. So I think that's what I need. Uh, I'll need to do one more when I do my basket. So I did already cut out an embroidery hoop from um, some crumb cake. I didn't want you to sit through everything, all these little finicky cutouts. Um, and so this is the center that was in that embroidery hoop, but I'm not using it on this card, but I do think I am going to use it to make a basket. And so I'm gonna bring in, I thought about doing it tone on tone, but I wanted to darken it a bit because we've got the crumb cake embroidery hoop and I've got crumb cake spools for my embroidery floss. So this is pecan pie, and I thought that would be cool to make the basket itself a little bit darker, but not on white, but have the darker tone behind it. So do that. You know me, I gotta clean my stamp right away. And do one more. I cut here. show you what I had in mind for this card. So I have a basic white thick card base and I thought I would put this strip of, I kind of like the interplay between this darker corner up here interplay between this sort of very classic oldie timey country you know embroidery hoop and basket and the more contemporary paper because um, I think that's kind of how our, our modern contemporary crafters are they like contemporary and the traditional crafts and how fun to put them together, right? So, get that right up along there. And then I also thought I'd put a piece, I think this ribbon is now retired, but it's the Petal Pink Soft Poly Ribbon. I'm gonna bring in a bit of tear and tape Put it right alongside that seam. Remember, if you've got a little bit hanging over, just fold it back on itself. That gets you a really nice clean edge all the way to the edge, which I think is great for holding down my ribbon. And I'm going to 
butt that right up against there. You can kind of feel it go right into place. And then I'm going to bring in my ribbon scissors. Get a nice flush cut. There we go. Having done all that, I probably should have started by um, stamping first in case there was a mess up, but we're just not gonna have any mess ups. Yeah. So that I think is gonna go on there. I'm gonna do that in the old olive. And because this has such thin lines, even though it is photopolymer, I am not going to bring in my stamp and pierce mat. I am just going to put it on there. And I find with the photopolymer sentiments, if I don't push too hard, I want to push with a little bit of pressure, but I don't want to push too hard because it kind of squishes out. It just squishes out. Don't know what I'm trying to say. What is that? Ugh, there was something on there, but it really doesn't show up. I'm not gonna worry about it. Ooh, sorry about that. That was loud. Okay. Now let's start to build up our card here. I'm just going to lay out some elements because I want to make sure my vision kind of works. get some of these put on. Did you see the little spools here? Oh, they're cute. Good morning, Wurgy and Christine. Thanks for joining me today. Hopefully when your project's done, you're not going to have quite as much thread left over as I've, I'm going to be showing here. But, you know, it is what it is, right? This is artistic license. So, again, I've got the um, adhesive sheet on the back of these scraps. I always keep all my little scraps of adhesive sheet because um, they're good to put on little scraps of cardstock to do itty bitty things like this. And since this these dies cut in twos, I have an even number, but we'll see how what sort of thinking of these as embellishments, so we'll probably just put an odd number on. And I also have the scissors because they're just too cute not to use. And so I've cut out one set of them in silver foil, and I cut out another set of them in Flirty Flamingo, again, with adhesive sheet on the back, because what I'm going to do is bring in my actual snips, and I am going to cut off the handles. And 
add them. Yeah, it took me a while, Wordy, to, to figure out how I wanted to use it. Um, oh my goodness. I think it's you have to have enough stuff on there that it's visually interesting but not so much that it gets overwhelming and it sometimes it's a little hard um, I did one that basically just had a paper trimmer and a sentiment and a little bit of DSP in the paper trimmer and it just it just wasn't interesting and I had to to go back and rethink what I needed to have there okay so these definitely go a particular way and I think I'm gonna need to figure out where I want everything next so if I'm putting that up there. Okay, I'm kind of liking the idea of this. Yep, 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 okay. I am just looking for my, there we go. I don't have it exactly how I want it, but it's close. really close. So again, I'm bringing in my press and seal. I've worked to get it really how I want it. So why wouldn't I make sure it stays that way? You know? Just trying to think about whether I want any of this popped up. And I don't think so. In part because since if I had put this on foam adhesive sheets, which I could go back and do, then maybe. But that won't pop up. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do them flat. There's enough texture on them. Those are going to need more glue, I know. And I'm going to bring that up a little bit from where I actually had it. So it's not right on the edge of the card. Yeah. 
I know those need more glue. Okay, now these guys. I didn't put adhesive sheet on the back, which perhaps was a mistake, but we'll see. Yeah, the um, that press and seal cling is just, just the best thing. There, that took a lot of concentration, believe it or not. So we'll do that. And then figure this one out. If you haven't practiced doing little dots of glue, you'll want to do that. So basically I just extend it till I can see that glue there and then I just gently touch it to my cardstock and I get itty bitty dots of glue. I know we sell a fine tip glue pen, but I find it is runny and more unpredictable than this method. So I don't tend to pull it out. And if you don't get it just right, it will clog. Or you'll bend the little pin that goes down into the needle point to, it can be very frustrating to use. That's what I'm trying to say. So I tend not to reach for it. Trying to figure out how best that orients in there. There are those. And then the one thing you notice on um, our snips or any scissors, they have, you know, the the hinge. So I figured out that in these loose frosted dots, I put a little drop of glue in the hole. pink, the smallest size one will fit right in there. So 
So that is my card. <laughs> yes, you can join the scissors together with a brad, and I did do that on one. You have to, what I found on the brads I had, I had to trim the, the wings, the flanges down once I'd opened it up, and it was kind of bulky. So let me pull in that card. This is the one that I said I didn't like so much. Although now that I go back and look at it again, I like it better than I did. So this is the one. I think in the end what I wound up doing was basically cutting the the part, the fastener part off the brad and just use the head of the brad and glued it on. So yes, you can. So there's that one, there's that one. Um, thank you for joining me today and I will be back same time, same place. Oh, hello Joyce, thanks for chiming in. And um, I will be back again next week and see you then. Bye-bye.